In this video on C Sharp Basics, we'll be taking a look at the for loop. Now, for loops repeat the execution of code within its scope while a specified expression is true. A for loop uses Boolean expressions, typically the result of relational operators, to determine if the code should be executed. Now, the evaluated variable and the increment or decrement operator are actually declared within the expression. A for loop is useful for executing code repeatedly until you need it to stop. Now the syntax of a for loop does limit the possibility of an infinite loop, but it is still possible. And finally, you can think of a for loop as a more compact but identical set of logic to a while loop. Now this is gonna make a lot more sense once you see the syntax. Here we have the for declaration. And you can see we have the int x equals one actually inside of the parentheses of the for statement, along with the relational operator and the evaluation expression. And then finally, we actually include the increment operator with the variable of x. Now, once again, we need our scope for our for statement. And then of course, we include the commands that we want to execute each time that the for statement is evaluated. So you can see this is almost identical as far as logic to the while loop. It's just that it's a much more compact variation of all of the statements required in order to evaluate a while loop. We have the int of x declaration along with the initial value being assigned to the value of x. In this case, we're saying it's one. Then we have the actual relational operator that's comparing the value of x to a constant of five as well as finally the incremental operator to x. So we have all three of the different basic pieces of logic required to understand whether or not a loop should be executed. It's this syntax of putting all three of these different basic ideas within the actual declaration of the for statement that makes it much more difficult for you to create an infinite loop. And that's why the for loop is generally preferred over the while loop. To begin with our for loop demonstration, we're just gonna start with the keyword of for. Now you'll notice that IntelliSense actually gives us a little code snippet for the for expression. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the tab key on for twice. And you'll see that this actually fills in all of the details of a for loop for us. Now we can just modify this little code snippet to do what we want it to. We're gonna go ahead and leave the integer variable of i in place. We're gonna set its initial value to zero. That's perfectly fine. But we're gonna to need to compare the value of i to a different value than length. Let's go ahead and use the value of five. And we'll leave i plus plus, or the incremental operator of i, at the end of our for declaration. Now let's go ahead and enter in the commands that we wanna execute for each loop. Let's just do console.write line. We're just gonna put in the value of i this time. And then after the for loop scope, we're gonna go ahead and do our console.read line. And this is of course gonna wait for us to enter some sort of key in the console window to exit out of the application. So there you have it, there is our for loop expression. Let me go ahead and set a breakpoint on the for loop expression. And then let's hit the start button up here to go ahead and debug our code. So we've stopped here on the declaration of i to zero. We can go ahead and hit the F11 key to step to the next line of code. And you'll see that it actually goes and does the evaluation of i to see if it's less than five. Then if we hit the F11 key again, you'll see that it goes into the scope of the for loop. It writes to our console window, the value of i, which is zero at this time. And there it is right there on our console window. And if we continue on and hit F11 again, you'll see that it jumps back up into the for declaration to go ahead and increase the value of i by one. Then it once again evaluates to see if i is less than five. If that's still true, go ahead and execute the commands inside of our for loop scope. Now, if we continue to progress through this, we'll see that we eventually get to a console.read line. And now it's paused and waiting for us to hit the enter key on the keyboard inside the console window. So hopefully you can see that the for loop expression is identical in logic to the while loop. It's just that the syntax is slightly different to help prevent any sort of infinite looping.
It also makes for a slightly more compact syntax to make things a little easier to read and follow along with.